On today's Fan Mail Friday, if the Halos lose Otani in free agency, should they go full rebuild or do they have the pieces to compete? We're going to share our answers with you. It's time to get Locked On with Mike and John, and this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and now on SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And the best way to help us out is by giving us a rate and a review. And those watching on YouTube, make sure that you're subscribed and click the bell to be notified every time a new episode drops. And today's show is brought to you by Bird Dogs. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on MLB, and they're going to throw in a custom, a free custom Bird Dogs Yeti style tumbler with every order. Hey, thanks for being here for this Fan Mail Friday edition of Locked On Angels, where it's your team every day you've got the first brothers here with you aka the super halo bros my name is john and that's my brother mike and my name is mike and that's my brother john mike just so everyone's aware we are going to be recapping the entire rocky series on monday so you can look forward to that we'll get through all three games and hopefully we'll be on the other side with a few wins maybe even i'm not going to say it because no predictions said, no, yeah, predictions. no predictions we're, we're on restriction we're banned for a from month <laughs> yeah yeah exactly hey we're going to get into your fan mail friday questions Mike, you asked for some smart fan takes, and so we actually had a few takes that I think are pretty smart. Let's go to our first voicemail. Hey, Mike and John. It's Jake from Fullerton calling in with a super smart and accurate fan take. I think that the Angels are on a really good trajectory uh, after the Texas series. I remember getting swept by the Marlins, and we were good, but we weren't really – we just couldn't hang with, with the better teams in the league. But after that Texas series, it really just feels like this team actually has a shot. Already at 11 wins this month. I think that the Angels close out this month strong, even with all the injuries. Take care of these NL teams. Have a pretty easy series, home series against the White Sox. And I think we'll be looking pretty good into the later months of the summer. With this momentum, maybe we can keep Shohei Otani, be buyers. Thank you. Jake from Fullerton, thanks for your voicemail and your super smart and accurate fan take. I love that, Mike. I'm glad he set that up for us that way. Uh, Gosh, doesn't it feel like a million years ago that we were swept by the Marlins? Right. And we were like the lowest of the low. Then we've had our highest of highs with how great that Texas series went. Then it was like panic mode when we lost against the uh, Royals last Saturday. And then these two Dodger games happen and they were just, they're upsetting. But man, what a roller coaster it's been. And I think back to how we felt during that Marlins sweep. And it was like, oh, great. Like, what what are we doing here? Yeah. But we've had our highs since then. And we feel pretty good about this team. And Jake seems to think, and and I agree, that we can at least get to that 15 win mark because we're already at 11. They've got to get through the, the Rockies and they've got to get through the White Sox. And then they have one game against the Diamondbacks before the calendar turns to July. Mike, what do you think about Jake and and the momentum that he's feeling right now. I think it's a smart take, Jake, and I really agree with you. I think that the Angels are on the upswing. I know that the Dodger series was depressing, but one of the things that we can take away from that series is that Reed Detmers pitched really, really well, and that's his third start in a row that he has pitched really well. And if the Angels just get him some offense and Shohei Otani some offense, then I think they can turn some things around against the Rockies this weekend and also against the White Sox. We're only four wins away from that 15-win mark that gets you to 90 wins if you get it every every month and so i think the angels are well on their way towards that and this weekend could be a good get right weekend for the halos and shohei otani had an amazing outing on wednesday night and for as much as we've talked about his pitching performance lately that was that was classic vintage shohei on wednesday night in how he was able to hold those guys to just the one run so yeah i agree with you i think the pitching is finding itself and right at a good time, too, because the offense might be dialed back a bit with all these injuries. Look, these injuries suck. I understand that. Better that they happen in June right now uh, than in September right. when you're trying to pick up those wins late in the season. I don't think that these are going to set us back because we are still going strong here in the month of June. Um, so, again, let's let's get these injuries out of the way now yeah. and be healthy the rest right. of the season. Speaking right. of injuries, Mike, uh, we had – a couple people reach out to us about this. Darcy Carroll on Instagram mentioned Jaime Candelario. And then Lisa Turk on Twitter, she said, here's my smart take. Uh, Trade Simulator says the only Angels player that I would consider trading with any decent value is Jose Suarez. 
I thought of two scenarios in sending Jose to the Nationals for Jaime Candelario, and the other is him to San Francisco for UC Fullerton alumni J.D. Davis, hmm. uh, who plays third base. So, Mike, would someone trade for Jose Suarez? The thing about him is that he just got moved to the 60-day injured list, so I am not sure that he's a trade piece right now, but let's talk about Jaime Candelario and J.D. Davis Good picks. Why don't you talk about Candelario? Yeah, Lisa, I really like this. I think that she's got two really good names here. Candelario has a great slash line, 256, 332, 477, and a 779 OPS. An OPS plus of 117, just as a reminder, 100 is average, so he's 17% better than the average player. He's been playing third base for the Nationals this year and signed a $5 million deal in 2023. He has a 79, almost 80% contact rate, and he's got a 2 point uh, zero UZR at third can play first hasn't since 2020 where he had a negative UCR. So mm -hmm. I think that this guy actually could be someone that they should consider. And Ryan Clary, our buddy over at the locked on nationals podcast said he will definitely be on the market for the nationals. And if it's Jose Suarez, that the angels are trading away, it would probably be maybe it probably makes sense to give him to a team like the Nats because you're not hmm. going to, to trade him and teams that are in like the race are probably not going to want him because he's been injured. But I think somebody like the nationals can maybe redevelop him and let mm. him get healthy. And he could be a really great benefit for them. What do you think, John? So even with the 60 day move, perhaps the nationals will still take us up on that. Considering Candelario is only on a one year deal. They can get a pitcher for the long term, kind of get him through this shoulder injury. I mean, that makes sense. I just you don't want I don't know if any team really wants damaged goods. Um, right. And, and right now, that's kind of where Jose Suarez is at at the moment. But, you know, for a one year deal kind of guy, I just the impression I got from Ryan Clary from Lockdown Nationals is like everybody's going to want in on Candelario this, sure. this th before the deadline. So I think we might have some competition there. Mike J.D. Davis, third baseman for the for the Giants. 286 average, 367 on base, 478 slugging, 844 OPS with an OPS plus of 131, making him 31% mm. more valuable than league average. Primarily a third baseman. He's making 4.2 million this year. He's arbitration eligible for another year. And then he's a free agent in 2025. Mike, he walks, he hits the ball hard. He doesn't chase. He's got top exit vel velocity in the league. He's uh, in the 74th percentile in barrel percentage. He's that corner infielder with power yeah. that you look for. I think he's at 10 home runs right now, but he does have the ability to hit with some power. The only thing is the Giants are 42 and 32. They're second in the National League West right now. Uh, right. They're first in the wild card in the National League. So I, uh, between competing with the Dodgers and the Diamondbacks, who are in first place, I don't know, man. I don't. I don't see the Giants giving away a piece like that. Right. That is is really helping them out this season. So it seems unlikely that they would trade, but you never know. You never know what a team needs uh, deep down in their system and if J.D. Davis would be a good option there. I have a feeling that Candelario out of those two would be the more likely outcome out of J.D. Davis and Jaime Candelario. Hey, the Angels are playing the Rockies at 540 Pacific time tonight. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. And coming up, on Locked On Angels, we need a first baseman. Somebody suggested Paul Goldschmidt. Hmm. See the answer? We'll talk about that coming right up. Locked on Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to join today. Don't miss your chance to snag a no-sweat no first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel. Again, go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball and Major League Baseball trademarks are used with permission. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Locked On Everydayers, join us on Monday as we recap this weekend series against the Colorado Rockies. Hopefully our boys can get the bats going up at Coors Field. I'm also curious to see Carlos Estevez if he has to close out a game because we all know that he succeeds away from Coors Field, and that's why we got him. And if he has to go in and close a game, 
I wonder what's going to happen, Mike. <laughs> we'll see what happens. The Angels are playing the Rockies tonight at 540 Pacific time. You can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Johnny, it's been great to be able to meet Angel fans from all over the place, hear from yeah. Angel fans from all over the place. And Robert lives in Texas. He is a transplant from California. Left us a voicemail, so why don't we play that? Yeah, hey guys, uh, my name is Robert. I live in Providence Village, Texas, a California craft find out here. Um, I was just calling to see what you guys think about adding a bat. Um, I read an article on Bleacher Report saying that Paul Goldschmidt might be available. I think he would be a great fit in this lineup. Uh, uh, a leader and a guy that can hit with runners in scoring position. Uh, I think it would probably take a lot to get him, maybe a still fast Bush. Uh, and a Dell package, but maybe if we could get him the package in, like Ryan Helsley to be another back end bullpen guy, I think it would be worth it to help us on a, a a real run as contenders this year. All right, let me know what you guys think. Great show, Robert from Providence Village in Texas. Thank you for sending in your voicemail. Appreciate hearing from you, my friend, Mike. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, and then potentially like Ryan Helsley too. Uh, yeah. My concern over Helsley, let me get this out of the way because I think the crux of our conversation is going to be about Goldie here. But yeah, right. um, he, he's been closing for the Cardinals, Ryan Helsley. Uh, he just went on the 15-day IL about a week ago with right forearm strain. Um, they say the concern is minimal, according to reports, and there's no structural damage. Man, when you talk about the Angels and right forearm strain, that gives me <laughs> flashbacks to Nam, yeah. man, because I... <laughs> <laughs> for, or to Nam. And so I just, that's my concern. Um, but I think that is an interesting approach to possibly getting Goldschmidt to come over and maybe getting a little bit of bold pen help. Mike, before we consider Paul Goldschmidt and what he can do for this team, let's go over his stats. Yeah, Paul is always a guy that I've loved just because he seems to be the guy that comes through when you need him to come through. Mm -hmm. WBC is an example of that. When he was with the Diamondbacks, he was great course with the Cardinals another struggling this year but he's really put up some big numbers 287 377 493 and an 870 OPS with an OPS plus of 137 13 home runs 48 runs scored 38 RBIs and eight stolen bases Johnny he makes 26 million this year mm -hmm. and 26 million next year yeah I'm of the opinion that if they can get Paul Goldschmidt I think you go all in because I love this guy and I think he would fit right in in Anaheim do you agree with me? You want another first baseman from St. Louis, Michael, <laughs> in their 30s? Is that what you're telling me? No, I, I'm kidding. It's not a 10-year deal. <laughs> <laughs> now, he is going to be 36, I believe, in September. And so we do have an older guy here. But, Mike, does Goldie make us a winner if he's in this lineup? What do you think? I, I think so. And I, the reason why, and I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I think he is somebody that – is really clutch. And I think he comes through when necessary. And I think he plays a strong first he's base. Got, and he's got good late and close numbers. He's yeah. Uh, his, his runners and scoring position was maybe uh, off the top of my head. I think it was in the mid 200. So like 250 ish. Um, but he does have some good numbers uh, in inning seven through nine, good batting average and whatnot. But, yeah. Yeah. Continue. Imagine him in this lineup though, behind trout and Otani and maybe even batting fourth. I think he would mm -hmm. be great. I think it'd be great batting fourth. And, and, and perhaps, when we talk about like what we would have to give up for him, I wonder if maybe we could throw in like a Hunter Renfro and, mm. and then we could bring up Joe Adele. And I know I'm just kind of spitballing here, but maybe perhaps that would be the move that we can make and then throw in some prospects. But I think maybe we can get rid of a Hunter Renfro and have Joe Adele play. Although I don't know if they would want to get rid of Renfro because he plays a great right field, but I also I don't think know there's if a lot of want, options. Want him too. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it, because it's a one year deal and then they can clear some salary and then they can actually go and maybe do a bit of a rebuild. I think that's part of it though, is they're going to want to do a bit of a rebuild and get some really good players. And, and the, the capital that we would have may not meet what the St. Louis Cardinals actually are, are asking for. Right. Yeah. Uh, it, when I look at St. Louis, they have a ton of pitching prospects in their top 30, two of their top 10 guys are shortstop. Their number mm. one prospect is a shortstop. I just don't know if we have the trade capital right for Goldschmidt. However, they might want to shed that salary. Mike, they want to, get rid of that, that, uh, 26 million a year. Uh, I, I, that is some incentive. Um, Mike, here's a good comparison. If we were to give up somebody and, and obviously I think it would take more than just like a Joe Adele, 
um, or maybe even like an Edgar Caro or something like that. Would that be the version of 2012 Gene Segura for 2012 mm. Zach Granke, where we get a pitcher we really need, and then we watch Gene Segura be good for other teams for his entire career? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the risk you take, right? And the good, good, good news is, is that when we traded Gene Segura, we still had Howie Kendrick and we had Eric Ibar, and, mm-hmm. and the Angels did make some good moves to get other players later on. So I think that we need to trade from where we have some depth. But again, I look at their where their prospect depth is at, and it's similar to our prospect depth. And so maybe we're not going to be able to make a trade one for one there. We'd probably have to really stretch to give them what they need. Now, final question for you. What becomes... Of the, the angel salary oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> with 26 million yeah. um, on the books for, you know, next year. And, and, you know, let me just say halfway through the season, 13 million for the remaining of this year. Does that affect getting Shohei Otani back and how much the angels are willing to spend if they add $26 million to the payroll next year, because you're going to have to add about 20 million for Shohei. If he gets that $50 million, $50 million a year deal, because right now he's at 30. You can yeah. add about 20 more. Some people are even saying, you know, 60 million a year. Um, if getting Goldschmidt means no Otani, what do you say? I think you go all in right now. And yeah. and, and I think you go for uh, go for the playoffs, go for a World Series. I think you got to go all in right now because uh, delaying it and saying, well, we want to make sure that we can get Otani. There's just not a guarantee. And Shohei yeah. has been very, very clear that he's going to let his agent deal with that, which – on a side note, Angel fans, when you see a really terrible game that happened against the Dodgers where Shohei pitches really well and they don't score many runs, the, the assumption that Shohei's gone or that Shohei's going to go to a team that can support him, th- that's just an assumption. The only thing that Shohei has actually said out loud is, I'm going to let my agent deal with that. And he <laughs> actually even said, after that Dodgers game, he actually even said, I, I just wish that I performed offensively and could have really helped myself out. And that top of the lineup needs to help. The, the team out. And so Shohei has never been negative about it. So letting our emotions get the best of us and say, oh, he's gone is something that we just, we, we have to put a handle on because Shohei has been very clear. I'm going to let my agent handle that. There's no guarantee he's coming back, but he is actually saying all of the right things and just waiting until he gets the opportunity to sign somewhere. Yeah. Uh, a, a Dodgers angels game on June 21st on a Wednesday is not going to be the thing that he thinks about um, right. when he's looking at, all the contract offers sure. he's getting. <laughs> sure. Mike, let's go to uh, our last voicemail of the day. Hey, guys. This is Braden Miller. I'm calling from Waseca, Minnesota. And I'm a huge Angels fan, but I'm mostly a Twins fan. But I was looking at the Angels' top prospects earlier today, and I was wondering, what are the odds we see Kai Bush this year in the majors? Thank you for listening to my message. Have a good day, and go Angels. Brady Miller from Waseca, Minnesota, who's a Twins fan, likes the Angels. Are you Love spying that. on our top prospects, Brady? Are you looking at <laughs> Kai Bush trade? going, yeah, who can the <laughs> Twins get from the Angels? Uh, Mike, Kai Bush, what do you think? Are we going to see him this year? Well, first of all, I think that if we're going to make a trade, could the Angels move to the Central and have the Twins move to the West so that yeah. we could sit at the top of the Central and right. not have to be over 500? That's um, the trade I want. <laughs> the, the truth is, is Kai Bush, I think, is he just came off the injured list. He started yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't think that he's going to be in the majors this year unless – something dramatic happens. I just don't think that he's going to be up. I think they want to develop him and don't want to push him. I think what we saw with Silseth, they don't want to make that same mistake with Kai. And not that they made a mistake with Chase, but I think that they want him to be consistent. And coming off the injured list, the Angels historically have a habit of giving those players extra time Mm -hmm. to figure it out wherever they are currently. So I don't think that we're going to see Kai Bush this year. If we see him at all, it'll probably be in a trade if the Angels make a trade for another bat or another starting pitcher. What do you think, Johnny? Uh, Maybe if he comes up late in the season and comes out of the bullpen, if we need a reinforcement. But I think you're right. You look at what they did with Sam Bachman last year. A lot of us were like, hey, bring Sam Bachman up. We'd love to see him in the majors. But they waited because he was hurt and they wanted to get him right and everything. Um, I like that they waited until this year to bring up Sam Bachman. And he's been great. And so I don't think that they want to rush Kai Bush either. He had oblique injuries, groin injuries. And then he tried to start uh, before yesterday and there were two rain delays. So he didn't even get to start those games until his first game until yesterday. Uh, So again, I, I, I think if there's, if there's a reason to put him in the bullpen toward the end of the season and he becomes our 
or K Rod or something like that. I think that would be pretty cool. Otherwise, I'm not sure we'll see him this season. Final segment for Fan Mail Friday. Thank you for all your questions and smart takes. Really appreciate that. So far, I like what Lisa had to say. Very smart take. Johnny Nick from Vegas on Instagram said, if the Halos do lose Otani, do you f- uh, feel a full teardown and rebuild is necessary, or can they be competitive going forward considering the amount of young talent they have? Examples like Neto, Ohapi, Moniac, Bell, or Adele, Bachman, Joyce, Bush, and, and others. Uh, and he said he loves the show. Thanks, Nick, for your question. Johnny, what do you think? Full rebuild or can the Angels be competitive? I don't think they have to tear it down, Mike. I think that what you do uh, in that situation is go ahead with the young guys and let them play and make it Mike Trout and the youngsters. Kind of like, I mean, <laughs> the Tigers have had a really hard time of it rebuilding. They've been trying to rebuild for a long time, but their team is kind of like Miguel Cabrera and the youngsters and and their youngsters are not great. Um, They do have some, some good options there, but for the most part, it's, it's been not great for, for Detroit. However, between Neto, Ohapi, Moniak, Adele, Sam Bachman, Ben Joyce, Kai Bush, Silseth, I think you got a lot of good things going there. And, And those aren't even the crowd that's in the minors that are, killing it right now either when we we talk about like Kyron Paris and and those guys and uh Trey Trey Cabbage I think there's a good future on this team and I think a lot of it has to do with Perry Manassian and the prospects that we've been able to call up because he's drafted well um and so I don't think you have to abandon ship if Shohei doesn't come back I do think that in some ways it might be to your to your advantage to have that DH spot Again, especially with somebody like Joe Adele, who you'd like to see in there and hit every day. But maybe you don't want to see him play in the outfield every day. (laughs) And and so I think that there is certainly a future if Otani decides not to come back to the Angels. I don't think you have to tear it down. I think it can be Trout, let him be the, the centerpiece, and then put all of these young, exciting, talented guys around him but what do you think yeah essentially like if we're going to look for the positives of not having Shohei on the team next year the first positive is you have 30 million dollars to spend sure and and I think that you can give that to maybe two pitchers or get a pitcher and a bat right and Julio Urias is is going to be available going to be a free agent maybe you go and get him but I'm with you I don't think you have to tear it down. I think that what Perry Manassian has done in the last couple of years with Ohapi and getting Moniak, I think a full season with those guys in the outfield and behind the plate is going to be a game changer. And John, wouldn't it just be classic angels to suddenly have a fantastic season next year if they don't keep Shohei Otani? Uh, they, they they have all these young guys and we're kind of like, yeah, it, it maybe it will, will be a good year. And they end up winning like 97 games, right? Like, <laughs> I can see that happening. It's, and that's and that's what happened with St. Louis when Albert Pujols left. They didn't give him the big contract and he left and came out West and they've been good. And I think they went and got Matt holiday and mm-hmm. people were like, ah, they're going to be kind of okay. And they made the playoffs and, and made a pretty good run. And so as much as I would love to have show here on this team for next year, I don't think you need to tear it down. I think that what you can do is just run with these young guys. And perhaps we even get to see a couple of extra free agents on this team, uh, be additives to the makeup of who the angels are. Yeah. I try not to get ahead of myself in terms of the young guys, just because, at the beginning of 2022, we were like, oh, man, Marsh and Adele, the future is here. Uh-huh. And then they, <laughs> yeah. they struggled. Um, obviously, Brandon Marsh had s- success with Philly. Uh, Joe Adele needed some more time to cook. And suddenly we had a whole different outfield. Trout was hurt. Um, it kind of makes you go, man, I wonder if our young guys and Otani and Trout would be enough. And yeah. then we can get rid of all the nonsense happening in the majors and just call up all the youngsters. But Again, that's that's getting ahead of myself. But I think you're right. I don't think you have to tear it down. I think there's a good future here in Anaheim. Hey, our friend Wes from Tustin had a great message. He said, hypothetical scenario and a two-part question. So settle in. Uh, it's November 1st. The Angels are coming off making the playoffs, but I don't know, losing in the ALDS to the Yankees in five games, for example. Part one, does Perry return as GM and Nevin return as manager? And part two... Is Otani more likely to re-sign with Perry and Nevin or with new management? Or 
Does any of this not matter because Artie is still the owner? <laughs> <laughs> <West much money. laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, Johnny, I, I'm going to, I'm going to look at this question in, in, in two parts. First part is Terry Manassian. Does he return? I think he returns. I, I think, think he's got one more year anyway. Yeah. I, I, don't I think, think he so. gets fired or anything. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he gets fired. I think he comes through. I think he's proven himself. Uh, when it comes to Phil Nevin, I think that if, if Artie is going to be here for a while, then I think that Perry could finally make a move on the manager that he wants. And if it's mm-hmm. Phil, and I, there's no indication that it shouldn't be Phil or that it's not going to be Phil or that he's upset with Phil. If it's Phil, then I think you bring him back maybe on a two-year deal. I think you mm-hmm. give him two years because he, he took the team to the playoffs. I don't think that any of that matters when it comes to Shohei Otani re-signing. And you had a really good point about managers and managerial situations, whether Shohei stays or goes, why don't you share that? Oh yeah. I was just saying uh, before we started and thinking about this question that, you know, if if the, in regards to Wes's question, like, does it matter if Perry and Nevin are here or if there's new management for Otani to sign Um, when it comes to Nevin, I don't think it matters if he's here or not regarding Otani's decision, because whether Otani stays with the angels or goes somewhere else, it would be his fifth manager of his career. So if the Angels didn't keep Phil Nevin and there's a new manager and Otani stays, that's the fifth manager of his career. If he goes to an, another team and not a new manager, but uh, a new manager to him, like if he goes to Texas and it's Bochi, you know, it, that's that's a fifth manager of his career. So yeah. I don't think it matters who the manager is at this point for Shohei Otani. I also don't think it matters for Shohei because – He's beating to the beat of his own drum or he's marching to the beat of his own drum because he, he preps the way that he preps and he does the things that he does. And I, I don't think that there's a lot of people telling him what to do. Right. (laughs) So I I don't think that managerial wise that will impact his decision. Now, Perry Manassian, I mean, he's had his faults. I think he's had his flaws. I think uh, 2021 kind of showed that with some of the free agent signings that we got Um, at the same time. I think he's done well with the cards that he's been dealt, whether that's been injuries to key players or having to deal with Artie Marino and, and finding diamonds in the rough in the sense that, you know, he spun a, a trade for Mickey Moniak off a half a year of Noah Syndergaard, or he, uh, he he traded for Logan O'Hoppy traded Brandon Marsh and both teams needed those positions. Uh, I think that was a great move. Uh, Some stinkers. Tyler Anderson's not looking that great right now. Um, losing draft picks because you signed Anderson and Syndergaard, that, that kind of goes against him too. But I think we're in the position we're in and excited about the players we're excited about. A lot of it has to do with Perry Manassian. So I think he gets another chance, even if the Angels don't make the playoffs this season. Well, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen of the day. Remember, the Angels play the Rockies at 540 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Give us a follow on Twitter at Lockdown Angels, at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. If you're on YouTube, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps out our channel. It helps Mike and I out. Hit that like button, too. And if you're on the audio side and you want to get in on the conversation, Comment below the video on YouTube. We'd love to have you. Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? Well, we're hoping the Angels can get right this weekend against the Colorado Rockies. We're going to recap each of the games Friday, Saturday, and Sunday on Monday on Locked on Angels. We got got Sandoval, Canning, and Anderson. Is it that order? Do I have that right? I got to look at that. But those three are going to be the ones going out there for us this weekend. So uh, I think think, – I'm looking right now. You're looking right now. Looking right Here now. we go. On yeah, the spot. Got, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Sandoval. Yep. Canning, Canning, Anderson, and then it's a uh, – I'm sorry. You're right. Sandoval, Canning, and Anderson. Yep. There we go. All right. I like those uh, I like those matchups. Maybe not Anderson so much, but <laughs> – Right. <laughs> All right. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens, guys, on Monday. Uh, we hope you come back and join us then as we recap the Rocky series. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.